good day to all our dear televiewers and subscribers of Teped R Teletroan. I am Joanna Marie Gibaldin, Junior High School Science Teacher from the Ansarile Integrated School, your teacher presenter for today's episode. At the end of this episode, we will be able to predict the qualitative characteristics, orientation, type, and magnification of images formed by plane and curved mirrors and lenses. Let's talk about reflection of light. Reflection is the bouncing back of light into the same medium it has been traveling after striking a surface. The ray that strikes the surface is called the incident ray. The ray that rebounds from the surface is called the reflected ray. And the angle between the incident and reflected ray is called the normal. The angle between the incident ray and the normal is called the angle of incidence. That between the reflected ray and the normal is called the angle of reflection. A mirror is not necessarily a silvered plate of glass. Rather, it is any surface that is smooth enough to produce a regular reflection of light incident upon it. When do we use different types of mirrors? There are two types of mirror, namely the plane mirror and the spherical mirror. Let's talk about plane mirror. A plane mirror is one with a flat surface. The ordinary mirror we have at home, where we can see exact image of ourselves, is a plane mirror. On the other hand, spherical mirror has a reflecting surface taken from the surface of a sphere. It may be concave or convex. A concave mirror curves inwards in the direction of the incident rays. A convex mirror bulges outward to the incident rays. The hollow part of a shiny spoon is a concave mirror. But if you turn it over, it becomes a convex mirror. A shiny Christmas ball, the rare view mirrors in cars, and the wide range mirrors in supermarkets designed to catch shoplifters are convex mirrors. Shaving mirrors, makeup mirrors, and dentist mirrors are concave mirrors. The image formed by a mirror or by a plane mirror may be real or virtual. A real image of an object is formed by actual intersection of reflected rays. It is formed in front of the mirror and is always upside down relative to the object. On the other hand, a virtual image is formed behind the mirror and is upright relative to the object. There is no actual intersection of reflected rays, but if we extend the rays as if they came from behind the mirror, there is an intersection. Note that this intersection is not formed by actual reflected rays, but only by the extended rays. Hence, virtual image cannot be projected on the screen. Real and virtual images may be bigger than the object, the same size as the object, or smaller than the object. Images formed by plane mirror are always virtual, upright, the same size of the object, the same distance behind the mirror as the object is in front of the mirror, and laterally reversed. Laterally reversed means that the left of the object becomes the right of the image, and vice versa. Let's have our sample problem. Plain mirrors in a beauty salon are arranged in such a way that they face each other. Suppose that two mirrors are 2.0 meter apart and an object is placed 0.5 meter from one of the mirrors, find the distances of the first image formed by each mirror. We are given that the two mirrors, M sub A and M sub B, are 2. meter apart and that the object is 0.5 meter from, say, M sub A. Let us represent the object by an arrow. Recall that the object's distance in front of the mirror is equal to the image distance behind the mirror. For M sub A, the first image is 0.5 at its back. Let us label it as I sub 1A. 
for M sub B, the first image form is 1.5 meter behind it. Let us label it as I sub 1 B. So the answer is 1.5 meter. We're done with plane mirrors. Let us now proceed to spherical mirrors. Let us have a ray tracing and spherical mirrors. Take a look at the figure. We have radius of curvature, the radius of the sphere, the mirror is cut from. We have certain of curvature, let us see, the center of the sphere, the mirror is cut from. Focal point F, the point where rays from a distance appear to converge. For a spherical mirror, the focal point is halfway between the surface and the center of curvature. Paraxial ray, a ray coming on the mirror parallel to the axis. Spherical mirrors are drawn in two, two dimensions. So you have to imagine the 3D mirror this line represents. Both convex and concave mirrors obey the same law of reflection, but they make different kinds of images. We can trace the image of an object formed by a spherical mirror by drawing rays emanating from one or more points on an object. We consider a point on the object, usually the tip, then draw incident and reflected rays. We need to draw at least any two of the rays. The point where the reflected rays intersect is the location of the image of the tip of the object. In like manner, the image of the other points of an object may be located and the image of the whole body can be traced. Let's have the special rays for convex mirror. Let's have the ray 1 rule. All rays incident parallel to the axis are reflected so that they appear to be coming from the focal point F. Ray 2 rule, all rays that, when extended, pass through C or center of curvature are reflected back on themselves. That's our ray 3 rule, all rays that, when extended, pass through F or focal point are reflected back parallel to the axis. Let's try to locate an image in convex mirror. So the object is placed in front of a mirror. Image properties. The object or the image is virtual or behind the mirror. Right side up, closer to the mirror than the object, is smaller than the object. Because the image is smaller than the object, convex mirrors reflect from wider angles than flat mirrors. There you have it. Please stay tuned for more discussion on our lesson about mirrors and lenses. We'll be right back. Diagrams help us visualize the type and location of an image formed by a spherical mirror. Let us proceed to concave mirrors. For concave mirrors, we have ray 1 wood. All rays incident parallel to the axis are reflected so that they pass through the focal point F. We have ray number 2 or ray rule 2. All rays that pass through C are reflected back on themselves. And let us have ray 3 rule, all rays that pass through F or focal point are reflected back parallel to the axis. Let's try to locate the image in concave mirrors. The object location is in between the center of curvature and the focal point. We have to apply at least two ray in ray diagramming. So we have the image properties. It's real in front of the mirror, upside down, farther from the mirror than the object, larger than the object. Let's have the next one. We have object location between the surface and the focal point. So you have again, at, uh, use at least two ray diagram. So we have here the image properties. It's virtual, right side up. 
farther from the mirror than the object and larger than the object. Now, try to give the image properties when the object is located beyond the center of the picture. Is the image A, real and magnified? B, real and reduced? C, virtual and magnified? Or D, virtual and reduced? So have our answer, letter B, real and reduced. Very good. Now, let's take a look at the application of concave mirrors. What if we put a light source at the focal point of a concave mirror? All the rays emitted by the light go through the focal point and are therefore reflected parallel to the axis of the mirror. Now let's proceed to lenses. Spherical lens. Spherical lenses differ in their ability to refract. Thus, there is a difference in the type of image they form. Refraction is the change in the direction of light when it passes from one medium to another of different optical density. Converging lenses can produce both real and virtual images, while diverging lenses can produce only virtual images. The type of image formed by a convex lens depends on the distance of the object from the lens. The image is formed at the intersection of the actual refracted rays. If the distance of the object is less than the focal length, the image is virtual. The refracted rays do not intersect. The image is formed at the extension of the refracted rays. It is located on the same side of the lens as the object. For any object, distance from the lens, the image formed by a concave lens is virtual upright, smaller than the object, and located on the same side of the lens as the object. It should be noted that concave lenses form the same kind of image as convex mirrors. Convex lenses, on the other hand, form the same image as concave mirrors. A convex lens is converging and can produce virtual and real images, as you can see at this picture. On the other hand, a concave lens is thin at the center and thick at the edges. Concave lenses only produce virtual images. They are diverging lenses. Thank you very much for your active participation. I hope you learned a lot. This has been Joanna Marie G. Balbin of the Ansarila Integrated School. See you again next time. Goodbye!